The Bamboo P1S is by far my favorite FDM printer. When I was using my Ender 3 V2, I was constantly thinking of ways to improve the printer, things to upgrade. I haven't really felt that with my P1S. But the folks over at BQ wanted to send me their new Panda touchscreen to try out. Per my standard sponsorship agreement, I accepted no money from them and informed them this would be a fully transparent review whether I liked it or not, and they won't see this video until you do. They sent it anyway, so let's get into it. The back of the screen has a magnetic mount attached to a USB-C connector. The mount and body are injection molded, and the magnets are incredibly strong. There's a connector for a temperature and humidity sensor next to a switch to change between off, battery power, or 5V DC. The side of the screen has a full-sized USB port for loading files from a flash drive. The kit also includes a strong metal mounting bracket with a strip of 3M double-sided adhesive. As is tradition with Big Tree Tech products, it also included a small rubber ducky. The Bamboo P1S has a lot of cool things inside of it, including a camera and LED bar, well lubricated Z rods with guide rails, and much to my surprise, a 5 volt USB port hidden directly behind the factory screen. The included USB cable from the Panda Touch will be connected here. There's even a groove in the printer's frame to tuck the wire out of the way. Now I finally understand the USB-C sized hole in the frame. I'll remove my little P1S and feed the cable up and out of the top. Taking the mounting plate off the screen, I lined up the metal bracket on the back side and tightened the included screws from the front. As I mentioned before, these magnets are pretty strong. They won't be falling off anytime soon. The recommended mounting solution is to place the Panda Touch directly above the factory screen. This would be okay, except we have this long power wire running over the top. Not only is this not very visually appealing, but it can become snagged on the lid quite easily. I understand why this was done and that options are limited, but still a small downside for me. So after connecting the USB-C to the plate, I instead mounted the screen on the other side, just above the hole to better hide the wiring. I set the Panda Touch to the 5V DC mode as this will be spending most of its life on the printer. The battery option is cool, but only lasts about half an hour. Now with the screen on, it's time to get through the setup process. It gives you a choice of English or Chinese for the language. The Panda Touch needs to be connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your printer. I entered my password and pressed OK. The screen then had what looked to be a memory corruption or kernel error and started to reboot. I assumed that this was normal at first, but then it began to boot loop, powering the backlight on and off repeatedly, but never fully booting. I quickly switched to battery mode because the screen will still be charging its battery off the mounting plate. It immediately went into the next step of setup. Kind of unsettling, but I'm used to weird technology. This page asks you to fill out the information about your printer so it can get connected, but instead of doing all that, you can simply press scan for it to search your local network for bamboo printers. This took some time, but it eventually found my P1S. After tapping the printer to select it, it asked me to confirm. This filled out all the necessary information except the access code. I wasn't sure what this actually was, but thankfully there was a little tip linked below the printer picture. This brought up a really helpful series of steps for finding the required information. After entering my access code and confirming, the Panda Touch was ready to use. The screen has some helpful buttons on the main menu. The screen is really responsive, and it seems to have less latency than the Bamboo Slicer or Handy App, which is pretty impressive. It actually feels like I'm pressing a button on the printer itself. Next is a tuning menu. This is basically the device page that you'd find in Bamboo Slicer. It allows you to move your axes and control temperatures. One complaint that I have are the bed controls. I was aware of this going into it thanks to the video that Brian Vines of BV3D made on the Panda Touch. If you want some great humor and honest reviews, be sure to check out his channel. The issue isn't just the strange arrow markings, it's that it's reversed in orientation as well. The top button, which shows the two arrows facing away from each other, moves the bed down. The bottom button shows two arrows facing each other and moves the bed up. This makes sense when you realize that the arrows indicate reducing or increasing the distance of the nozzle to the bed, also called Z height, and not the direction of travel. This problem is exacerbated by the fact that one would naturally assume that the uppermost button would move the bed up, while the lowest button would move the bed down, regardless of the symbol used. Back to the fun stuff, we have settings for printing along the left side of the menu. You can adjust the speeds and temperatures manually. 
The NA indicates that my P1S does not have an active chamber temperature sensor. You can also adjust fan speeds. I was again impressed how fast the printer responds to the Panda Touch when compared to Bamboo Slicer. Anyone who's made adjustments has probably encountered a small delay between switching off the aux fan and it actually turning off. I don't get that from this screen. Finally, it was time to start a print. Through the USB, it can only read 3MF files, and these need to be what Bamboo Slicer calls plate sliced files, not a generic 3MF file. But you can just send a print through the cloud from your slicer. The screen will load the information. It shows this adorable cartoon of a little panda chomping on some bamboo, and now I finally get the joke. But this is all it shows during the entire printing process. I had partially expected to see a thumbnail of the model like you do in Windows File Explorer, but no, just a cute panda. Part of me also wishes it showed the camera feed, and while I can already hear the comments telling me how silly that is because I can just look in the printer myself, it would be pretty handy to take the panda touch to the kitchen with me while cooking and let me check on my printer remotely. But speaking of handy, that's the name of Bamboo's official app, and it lets me do this from wherever I am. This brings me to my conclusion on the Panda Touch. It's a really cool quality product that integrates seamlessly and easily with my printer. But before this, I had only actually used my printer's screen a handful of times. I never saw a need to use it when I had the handy app or my computer with Bamboo Slicer open. To me, the Panda Touch solves a problem that wasn't a problem, but it does so quite well. It's a nice addition to an already great device and adds another avenue of control. I found myself using it mostly to adjust fan speeds or temperatures quickly when I'm just walking by my printer, but I still send most of my prints through either the Handy app or the Slicer itself. I think the Panda Touch would be most useful for someone running a print farm, multiple printers, or a printer in an education environment where students probably shouldn't have network control over devices. Since we're coming up on the end of the video and I have been using the Panda Touch for a few days now, I figured I would give it one more chance to connect after that weird kernel error reboot issue. So I took the Panda Touch off, switched it into the 5 volt DC mode, and reconnected it. The backlight illuminated, briefly, then turned off, then turned back on. And finally the Panda Touch booted. It was ready to go again. I suppose it was just a fluke during setup. How about you? Is this something you'd add to your printer? If you want to pick one up for yourself, there's a non-affiliate link in the video description. Let me know in the comments below, and definitely don't subscribe because I would hate to reach 10,000 subscribers. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.